As quilters, we can absolutely love a fabric or a bundle of fabric and not always be certain just how we're going to quilt with it, what we're going to make, how to match it with other fabrics, and of course, most importantly, what pattern are we going to use. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and what if I could tell you I have a pattern you can download for free that can use any kind of fabrics. Oh my gosh, you're going to love this versatile pattern. It's the All Blocked In pattern. It's down below in the description box, and you can download it right now. Today I'm going to show you not only how to make that quilt, but a number of other quilts so you can get an idea of all the variations that you can get out of this single quilt pattern. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm really anxious to show this to you. Before we get into today's quilt, I just want to talk about this quilt pattern with you. And this is the very first quilt that I made with it. It's a baby size quilt, and it's made with six easy blocks. Each block measures 14 inches. And you can see there's only five pieces of the block. There's only five um, units <laughs> within each block. Plus, it has these accent strips, and that's what makes this quilt so awesome, is that little bit of an accent. And you can turn your blocks any which way that you want. Now, the quilt is just these six. I add a border occasionally onto the side, just because I think it's sort of a fun way to finish it. But this is the first one, and I wanted to show you another I did. So this is six blocks. This is with 12 blocks. And this is black, gold, and purple. And it's a fun, colorful quilt. And it's just kind of interesting to see how all the different fabrics show up in different ways because of the size that they're cut in each block. So this is the kind of pattern that we're talking about. This is the one we're going to do today. And I just want you to take a look at this before we get started. And remember, this is a free download. It's down below in the uh, description box. And here's a close-up of that quilt with the black and gold and purple. And the blue is, I mean, the purple is a great accent strip, but the blue with the yellow, I think, works perfectly. I chose the yellow because it works really well with all the gold. And the blue and purple, you notice this blue fabric has bits of purple in it, so it just worked out great. And of course, the purple has dots in it, or at least some of it does. These have a darker purple dot. So it all just sort of ties together in an interesting way, and it is a lot of fun. So I haven't quilted this one yet, and uh, I haven't quite decided how I want to do this or what I'm going to use for the backing, but I just wanted you to see how many different ways this quilt can be made. You may recognize this collection of Fat Quarters. I um, opened it a couple weeks ago, and I posted it on the community tab because I needed help trying to decide what colors to mix with it to do a quilt. I've decided the quilt I'm going to make. It's my all blocked in pattern. It's a free download. I'll put the link below. Make sure you get it. It is a super easy quilt to make, and it's a big block. It's a 14 inch block, which is awesome. So it makes a large quilt quickly. And you use six fat quarters to make six blocks. And the colors are mixed up, and it's, it's just a lot of fun the way it goes together. And I'm going to show you that. But I want to do this with about 18 to 20 blocks. So that means I'll need 18 to 20 different fat quarters. And so what I need to do is pull this together. Now, this bundle is 12. This is the one, my fat quarter bundle club, that I get once a month from the fat quarter shop. I want to talk to you because some folks think that I just have this closet full of yards and yards of fabric. Not the case. I buy fat quarters. So every month I get my 12 fat quarter collection and it's, it's like $44 with shipping. So I'm really pleased with the selection of fabric that I get. And the fact that I get them every month, I get a coordinated group of beautiful batiks and they have different kinds of collections but I like the batiks and every month it's a different colorway. So when I use these fat quarters, you've seen me cut, I'll cut charm, uh, charm squares or layer cakes, and I always have leftover pieces. So while it looks like I have a ton of fabric, it's pieces that are left over from my fat quarters. And I cut them into certain dimensions that I regularly use, so I always have some fabric to work with. And that's my secret to having a lot of fabric to making some great quilts that are filled with color. 
But right now, we need to talk about color and how we're going to use this. The best way to determine your colors for a quilt is open the fabric that has the most colors. And that's going to be here. So you pull your fabric that has a lot of colors that you love. When you look closely, you're going to see all the different colors that are mixed in from blues to teals to greens to pink to orange to some rosy colors and some really dark greens, almost a dark blue spruce evergreen in here. And of course, the browns. Now, you know, brown is in the orange family. So it's one of those sort of russet colors. And we've got lots of shades of that with the, the corals and the sort of almost a salmon color. So there's a lot here we have to work with. Plus, we've got our light dots and leaves in here. So there's your kind of a low volume opportunity as well. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to pull out some fat quarters that I have that I, I haven't put to use yet and see what will match here. These are a couple of my newer ones that I just haven't had a chance to touch. And this one I really liked when I opened it. And look at how many colors here that are in this bundle that I can cross over. What I really like is that this brings in the pink tones. So this has the dark background, but look at we have the blues and we have some more blues that really work well. They're very similar, if not the same color, but this is the, the color group that I'm particularly fond of here that I want to incorporate. So it'll brighten it up, it'll liven it up with more color. I love the blues, but getting some rosy pink colors are going to be really great. And there's one other one here that's very similar to that that I want to show you. This one has some great colors as well. I like this dark green. See, we're bringing in some of these rosy pink colors and kind of some teal. There's a bit of purple. I'm not going to bring purple in. I think if we go pink, that's more than enough. But we have some great golds here. And look at these floral prints with all the colors. We've got some sort of a geometric, oh my goodness, so these are going to be some great colors. Now, I do have to show you, um, when I ordered this, there was another fabric in here I have since used, and I bought a yard of it. Look at this. So this is something I'll be able to use in this quilt as well. But see how we change the dynamics of these colors by adding this extra piece? And it has all the colors. Now, like I said, there's lavender, which I'm going to stay away from. But we have the blues, we have the greens, the terracottas, and a bit of brown in the background. So this works wonderfully with all these fabrics. Oh, my goodness. And look at these. See, some of these are just leftovers that I never use the whole pack because I'll break these up and use them as as I need them, as I find something I want them to, to be with. But here's a couple of gold pieces. That, this is mostly a blender, which would be nice, but I like this gold because it's on the lighter side. It's going to brighten things up. It's sort of along the lines of this color, and it would also look really good with this. So we've got some great opportunities here. Now here's another one. And this kind of brings in a few different colors. We have the golds and the light golds, which is nice, and kind of some low volume, which would work great in the background. And these brown with the teal colors in there. Let me open this up a little more so you can see. Um, this has more of that gold where this has the rosy colors, but it's going to work well. The other thing, I'm going to mix these and, you know, put them together in a way that all these are going to sort of blend together. And, oh, I can't wait to show you this quilt. It's such a fun quilt to use color with. But look at this, this little orangey. Oh, my goodness. And we've got another sort of a different shade of teal here. This is a darker shade of that one. Oh, look at that. And I think, okay, this one, look at that blue. 
um, a pop of blue is really awesome. Isn't there an old uh, adage that says every room in your home should have some blue in it because blue is such an attractive color and makes you feel good? I can believe that because it sure makes me feel good. These are some pieces that I had um, that I just kept with these when I got this bundle because I thought, oh, these will go great. And, oh, these, <laughs> these are actually layer cakes. No, these are pieces that I cut. Remember when I cut my fat quarters and I, I have that 10-inch strip? That's what this is. So I'll be able to use this as well. And so this, and then what are the other colors in here? These are probably darker than I want to go with, but they are some great colors. And this would be fun to do some contrast with like some bright golds and yellows. Oh my goodness. So I can see where I might use some of these blues. I'm going to set that off to the side so I can think about that one. And then here's the last bundle I pulled. Um, and these are the end of my fat quarter bundles that I haven't used yet. This is everything. And can you tell what's the commonality here? Brown. I have a hard time with brown because I don't quite know what to do with it. Well, I have discovered some ideas with brown that I'm excited about. Once I made the connection that brown is part of the orange family and orange goes great with blue, I was sold. I love my blues and greens. And just look how well all this goes together. And we've got some more teals in here, medium, light, dark, and the rosy color. Oh, this is, a, this is that piece. This was the bundle that I got that I ordered more of this. And just look at these great fabrics. Okay. This is more than I can take right now. I have to sit back and take a break, <laughs> take a look at this, and I need to choose 20 fat quarters. That's not going to be easy. Here's another baby size quilt that I did with the six blocks and again with the side stripe. What I think is funny is there's a lot of brown in here and you notice I brought the pinks in. So I had learned this lesson before and obviously forgot about it, but the pinks and the blues together, I love that combination. So this was um, a little baby quilt, but I wanted to show you is I used layer cakes for the backing. It worked beautifully. I just put my layer cakes in here. This came out, uh, the photograph, more purple. It's, it's actually, or actually pinkier than this. But um, I just wanted you to see how fun, you know, you can use up your fabrics in a lot of different ways. You could actually make larger squares if you have fat quarters or yardage and you know be creative and think about what you have that you can use and put to good use to make a beautiful quilt. Now let me show you what this looks like up close and personal. And here's this cute little baby quilt. These prints are just such fun and it's all pink and brown and I love how it goes together and you can see how the block for example this is one block right here and here's the other one and they're just they're really pretty they're easy and it's very easy to quilt here's the back and what i did is i just did some random lines down the front of the quilt i just went every couple inches and i did a few lines and then i do a single and so it's nothing fancy but it's really easy to do and this is just a wonderful pattern i think you're going to enjoy this my quilt keeps getting bigger. I'm up to 24 blocks now, and that means 24 fat quarters. So it's going to be probably a 70 inch square. And I'm really excited about that because I love these colors. So what I did is I broke them down into different color groups. So there's four sets in each color because I need to have six fabrics in each group to make my blocks. So I'll take one of each of these and I'm going to combine them together. And the way I'm going to do that is just sort of group them and I want to make sure there's contrast and light fabrics in each group. So here are my four darkest. Now this is a very dark brown. I didn't want to get any blacks, but I like that particularly dark brown one there. And then I want to bring in some blues. And I'm looking, this has a lot of blue here, so I'm going to put more of a solid. And this one sort of has a lot of the orangey gold colors. And that can go there, and this will be fun with that bit of yellow. 
So now I'm going to do the same. These have a lot of the blues, but they also have the greens. But let's go ahead and put this light color in next. Um, I just automatically right there, that looks really good. And let's see, these are some brown and gold. I think I'm going to like that one there. And then I'm going to put these two like that. And now we're going to take this group of colors. And where are we going to do the green? This one has some green swirls. So we'll put that in there. And I kind of like this here. And ooh, look at this is going to be perfect right there. That blue and that blue. So those work really well together. And let's see. Let's put these in. Now, this is my lightest, and I want to look at the block that's probably the darkest to bring in a light color, and that works there. This is also one of my most favorite batik fabrics, this sunflower, and they've created it in so many different colorways. Oh my goodness, I love this. All right, so now these are sort of some rosy colors with some blues, and this is a tealy color. Um, let's see, where will these work best? I kind of like that there. And I like this here, and I like that there. And what do I have? So there's five in each group, and I need to have six. This was the hard part, was bringing this one down um, to only four, because I think I had like eight of these, these colorways, and I think they're beautiful. So this is going to bring a lot of pink in. Now I'm going to put this over here just because this has quite a bit of gold in it and I think that would really work well. And this is a particularly darker group and I think these brighter colors will work well. And then these are kind of pretty much the same, just different prints. So there we are. This is what each quilt block is going to look like. The beauty of this particular quilt block is we're going to take each group of six and layer them together and cut the block out at one time. And then we're going to sew each of them. And I'm just going to pile them up here so I know where my colors are. And it goes together so quickly. So let me go ahead. We'll start with this one. And I'll show you how this is all going to come together. Here's one of my favorite of the all blocked in pattern. I love the low volume. And you've seen this fabric, this, um, I don't know what it is, some kind of a daisy. It might be a chrysanthemum. But it's this beautiful peach flower and it has this turquoise paisley with dragonflies and then we have the uh, cone flowers. I just love these prints and with the low volume background I think it turned out beautiful and there are some batiks in here as well. But I wanted you to see that you can use fabrics other than batiks and they work wonderful and I really liked how this back turned out. I just took extra scrap pieces that I had and put them into nine patches, sewed them across, and I had a large piece of fabric that I used as a border and across the back. Now, these accent strips, generally I'll use the same color throughout all the blocks in any quilt. This is a 12 block. Um, I didn't have enough to do this, so I just found another piece that was similar and then, you know, use that alongside the border. And if you look close, you can see how I mix the fabrics in the border. Excuse me, how I mix the fabrics in the binding. And I've got some of this russet in here, and then I used some of this fabric, but I used it kind of in the opposite direction, so we get the little, almost like a crosshatch in there. So this was just a lot of fun to put together with some different ideas. And here's a peek of this quilt up close and personal, and you can see all these fabrics. They're just wonderful. It's a mix of low volume, there's text in here, and then we have the batiks, and of course the prints that I love, and some of this sort of collage grungy fabric. It just, just works fun. Now this particular um, contrast strip is a batik, as is this one over here, but even though they're a different color, it, it works because this is, you know, a darker version of, of these dark tones, and it's almost the same color that's in these small ones. You can see here how similar those are. So it all ties together quite well. 
And then this has all kinds of colors in it, but the gold in particular is, is what stood out and uh, worked as a great border for this particular quilt. So I just wanted to show this to you, and I want you to see the back. I just really am pleased with how that turned out. So the top panel is the low volume, and the back panel is this batik, and then I just did the, uh, the nine patch in between, and I think it turned out great. This is a fun way to finish a quilt if you have lots of small pieces. So keep that in mind. You can always have fun with the backs of your quilt. Let's do some cutting. I'm going to get these fat quarters pressed because they have been packed in a box forever. And I'm going to then show you how we cut this pattern out. And if you want, take a look at the pattern below. It's a free download and you can take a look at it and follow along with how this quilt is made. My first six fabrics are all layered together, fat quarters. This one ended up being a little on the smaller side. I obviously had cut fabric off, so I put it on top to make sure I get the, the correct cuts and don't come up short. So I have all my fabrics. I line up against this corner, and these were the straightest edges. So I have all these lined up. But look at these wonderful colors. Don't they look great? This is going to be so pretty. And so what I'm going to do, first thing, is trim this up. And I have this straight here. And I'm going to cut across this edge to make all those pieces nice and even. What I'm going to do is start with a 17 by 14 and a half block. Now, I'm going to show you what we do in order to cut this block. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off two and a half inches from the top. So we have 17 by 14 and a half, and we're going to cut off a two and a half inch strip from the top. But we only need 14 and a half of it, so we're going to cut a two and a half inch square. And you'll see that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen and a half. And now we have some great two and a half inch squares to put in another quilt. Then the next cut is going to be five by eleven and a half. So one, two, three, four, five. This is now twelve inches, but I need it to be eleven and a half. So I'm going to cut my five. And then I'm just going to take a half inch off of that. Then the next thing I do is I'm going to take off a two inch strip. Now this is going to be an extra strip that you can set aside to quilt with later. And I'm just going to cut that out, set it aside, and now I'm going to cut a seven inch block. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten by twelve. And I'm going to cut five and seven. So I'm going to come over five inches here, which is going to give me a seven by ten inch block. And then the last thing I'm going to do is cut this into two five inch blocks. And that's the extent of cutting out our pieces. Once your fat quarters are divided into groups and you press them, lay them out, and we're going to cut them. And the pattern has step-by-step -step instructions on how you're going to cut each piece. As we're putting our quilt together, we obviously want to interchange these pieces so we don't have the same piece on each layer. Now the first thing we're going to do is take this piece from the side, bring it down to the bottom, and bring this here. So this is going to create the square, because otherwise we'll have a rectangle. Then what we're going to do is start with any block, whatever works for you. I always work in this upper corner. Leave that as it is, go to the next one, and remove the top and put it on the bottom. Just take one piece of fabric off the top and put it to the bottom. Here we're going to take two. So what we're doing is creating a here we go, a block with multiple fabrics in each, each uh, size. So we did one, two, we'll do three here. And actually I'm going to go, there we go. 
So we do three there, and then we do four on the last one. Because that was this one. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is what our first block is going to look like. And the easiest way to start sewing this is to put your two five-inch squares together, and then you sew these together. Now, we'll then sew this, and we'll sew this. But there is one other thing that we're going to do. We need to add some accent strips. And given all these fabrics and the great colors that we have, I, I had thought, let me grab this right here, that we might go with some pink fabric. But, you know, e even these darker pinks, they're, they're just a bit way too much for these colors. But I have another one that I think will work out perfectly. And these are going to be just a narrow strip that's going to go here and here. And this color is a great accent strip and it works with everything here. So I'm going to cut my accent strips and ordinarily what you would do is just use an extra fat quarter or you can use some of the fabrics in here and just switch them out to create your accent strip. That's entirely up to you. I like to have all my blocks use the same accent strip because then it sort of unifies the quilt with all the different blocks. So at this point, what we're going to do is cut our accent strips and then we'll start piecing our quilt and it goes together very, very quickly. So I'm going to start by sewing these sections and these sections together and then we're going to get this quilt all put together. Here's the finished quilt block, and I want to show you how we get there. So the first thing we do is sew in the accent strips. And this one goes between the two 5-inch. This is the narrow 1-inch strip. And this is the 1.5-inch strip that goes to the long 2.5-inch piece on the edge of this block. Now what I've done is I press this towards the outside, and I press these seams towards those outer larger five inch blocks. Now the next thing I'm going to do, because you can see this goes here and this goes here, so we're going to sew these two pieces together and then this is this block, so that'll go right there and then as you can see this goes right here. So this is a very simple block to piece. It's straightforward, there's no matching seams, Everything just sews over everything else, so you don't have to worry about that. The only time you'll have matching seams are at this point when the blocks come together. And here's the all blocked in pattern in those bright tropical colors you just saw me cutting. I love how all these blues and pinks, purple, green, yellow, everything is just so bright. And it's a gorgeous quilt, and I love that turquoise accent. It just works in there perfectly. And notice on this one I did a double border on two sides. And so, you know, you can be totally flexible depending on the size that you want. But the difference about this is that it's a nine patch. There's nine blocks in here. It's three by three. And I wanted to make it a little bit bigger, so I just added this border again with the accent strip in there. And I think it looks wonderful. And here's the turquoise quilt. You can see all these colors. Look at all that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, they're just so vibrant and very tropical. And of course, and you can see these, uh, what do I want to say, the accent strips are not all the same batik. I had different ones that I use. And so again, flexibility. These, these could almost be considered scrappy quilts because you can mix so much into it. And it's a fun way to use up fabrics. It's a fun way to use fabrics you don't quite know what to do with. And you just find a few, gather them together, and put them in something like this. An accent strip ties it together. And it's great fun. It really is. I made a total of 24 blocks. So there were six blocks in each color group. And here are the first two. And you can see that these colors are repeated in each of the blocks. Every fabric is actually in five blocks, 
but we need the six fat quarters in order to make six blocks. So it works out really well. And these colors just work really wonderfully together. And here's another group over here. And just see how pretty they all work and how this accent strip really ties it all together. Okay, these are the first two sets. Let me show you the second sets. Here's the second set. And these two, you know, have all the same colors some different variations. These have the two lighter fabrics, which I think works out well in the overall quilt. It really brightens up those areas with some lighter backgrounds. But now I want to show you what the finished quilt looks like. Didn't this turn out beautiful? I love all these colors mixed together and a little bit of teal that's just splashed everywhere. It brings it all together. It sort of gives it a, a total look with a particular color scheme, despite all the different fabrics and different colors mixed in here. Now, you'll notice this is a 5x5, five five, which is 25 blocks. I made 24, so I had to make the 25th block, and I had pieces of everything that I could use except for this larger 7x10. So here's the extra block that I made, and look what I found, some blue sunflowers. Is it a perfect match? No, but I love this sunflower print, and that blue looks great, and I'll always see it whenever I look at this quilt. <laughs> so there you have it. It's a wonderful pattern. It's easy. Batiks look fabulous in this quilt, but as you can see by the other ones that I showed you, any fabric you use is going to look terrific. So make sure you download the pattern, and I have enjoyed sharing this and all the quilts with you. This has been a fun video for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Have yourself a fantastic rest of the day. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, it's been a pleasure.